Well, it's getting very late and we're 84% done with my Benchy. Will it blow my A-net one out the water? Um, from this distance, I would say yes, but let's wait and find out. Well, my uh, new PLA is in place and I've tried a few settings which I think are going to work. Um, might have to do a little bit more fiddling. I have adjusted uh, a few of the nuts and bolts and everything and uh, the Tiny Machine video is actually a very useful one so I've uh, updated my main video uh, where I actually built the CR10S with their link and uh, if you follow that video you should have a nice simple build there so it's definitely worth checking out it's the video they do actually include in on the USB stick so it's very very useful uh, what we've got printing here is the Reseam Warhammer from MechWarrior Online uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it prints out and compares to the A-Net um, the difficulty is I've got both a new printer and new PLA so we'll see how it works out well, it's been a few hours uh, since my last clip and I'm still pretty impressed with the output from this machine. Uh, I've uh, got a MechWarrior Online Warhammer uh, in progress. Uh, one thing I have noticed, um, this roller here does look like it's got a little bit of scarring so I might need to adjust the nut on that one. Um, I also need to double check the belt tension. I, I wonder if um, they're a little bit too tight, but the overall quality still seems pretty good. Currently printing at 0.1 layer height, uh, I want to do a couple of 0.5 test prints, but a lot of people seem to be suggesting that a, a 1.2, 0.1 sort of layer height is probably the best mix of quality and processing time. So let's have a quick look at the Warhammer. Now this is what I've got so far, the front and back glued together. The quality of the print's pretty good. Now I'm particularly impressed by, let me get a pen in here actually, uh, this roughish uh, finish here, if you just lightly scrape it with an X-Acto blade, then you actually get a pretty good finish. Now if you don't know what an X-Acto blade is, it's one of these uh, things, you just gently rub it down that surface and it cleans up this PLA pretty nicely. Um, I've tried several different prints with this material. Um, so, we've got uh, an XYZ. Uh, I did this at 215 degrees and a little bit of a gap there and some ghosting started to happen, but not a bad print. Uh, what else? Oh yes, I tried starting the cat, but chickened out and cancelled it. Now, I think that was a point five print, Ooh, maybe a bit too close, there you go, it was meant to be a 0.5 print but um, you know it's going to take hours so I cancelled that and then the other bit I've done is a little coin off uh, Thingiverse which I think showed that I had a little bit of under extrusion so still tweaking away, um, there is some test prints I ought to do uh, but I'm actually trying to print out things that I can use and you know I can still use this even if it's not a perfect print so uh, rather than just print a load of random stuff like this all the time I'm actually trying to print out something and I will actually print out the cat now I, I don't know whether to go for this high res version or um, I, may, maybe I will um, just because I'm probably only going to print out one copy uh, I also tried out this fish which it's got a little kind of weirdness going on here. I think maybe the hot end didn't lift um, properly or something so I um, need to look at my retraction settings. So retraction settings, uh, extrusion amount and decide on a quality level and uh, I think this was a 0.8 layer height, this I think was a 0.5 layer height and this was a 1.2 layer height if I remember correctly. Anyway, I'm currently printing everything on 1.2, so this uh, Warhammer is definitely printed at 1.2. And once you put a bit of paint on it, the layers aren't so prominent. Uh, it's a little bit tacky at the moment. It's still not quite 100% dry, that paint. Anyway, there you go. Well, I've got my printer back in its normal place, so uh, criticisms, uh, I've already mentioned 
not so keen on this housing being very pretty but makes it hard to see what you're printing. The other problem is this cable here could do with some sort of attachment to the extruder to keep it out of the way of your print job. I can see it being a problem when you get nice big vases drooping down and interfering. Um, the belts, the way they attach is great for a brand new printer. I'm just a little bit worried about uh, when it comes to replacing the um, the belt because it seems to be like pushed through a hole and crimped in place. Uh, and then the only other criticism obviously is that this is quite a noisy little box and all the components are, are tucked away in there and you can't see them which you know, when you're used to being able to easily access stuff um, is a bit of a shame. Um, I'm, I think I prefer the idea of either the Prusa concept of having the control box on the front or the A-net option of having it on the top here. But you know, these are all very nitpicky things. The quality seems to be pretty good. Still tweaking. I, I reckon it's going to be another week before I finally get everything bedded down in exactly how I want them. But um, yeah, thumbs up. Well, approaching six hours, I might finally have broken my CR-10S Catastrophe prints. Let me show you. And here it is, the infamous CR-10 Cat. Now, I did actually almost lose this print because my spool jammed up and almost got pulled off uh, the holder. But uh, I managed to rescue it, but I think it has put some layer lines in. Uh, without touching it sort of around here-ish somewhere, so it's after the necklace but before the nose. So we're going to see what it looks like close up, but it's looking pretty good from this distance. So uh, hopefully in a minute or two we will have a finished cat. Well, as we wait for the cat to finish, just to remind you, this is one of the first prints I did uh, using my old 12-month-old PLA, and it, it turned out pretty good uh, just get this focus here yeah um, so there's a little bit of uh, sign of layer banding and maybe a teeny hint of ghosting on the letters but not a bad first print I then did Benchy which uh, came out pretty well and you can just about see the lettering on the base there the lettering on the back here is not that easy to see uh, again, the layer height's pretty good. There's a slight rough edge here, but not bad. I haven't done any cleaning up. As you can see, there's a little bit of string in. It did go wrong at the top here. Now, I believe this is because the PLA was a bit too hot. And we'll come back to that issue. Uh, we then swapped to my new filament. And, um, yeah, not bad. A little bit of funkiness in the corner. And, yeah, a little bit of ghosting on the letters. And then maybe a little bit of under extrusion because of the gaps at the top there. I then started off trying to print a temperature tower at 0.4 resolution. Definite signs of under extrusion. The tower is fairly sturdy. It's missing some details in the letters and numbers here. But yeah, uh, okay. The coin, which we've already seen with under extrusion. The fish, which... Um, yeah, not, didn't quite work. Then the first cat, which I cancelled because I chickened out. Um, so that's not actually a print failure, that's me cancelling it. So I decided to print it again, but I obviously didn't apply uh, the bed adhesion uh, 3D lac quite properly because it actually came loose, started moving around, I ended up with spaghetti hell. I then printed the next MechWarrior Online model. So just to remind you, this was, I think, 0.2 layer height on my A net and a little bit rough details here and there but I was pretty impressed mainly due to the fact I was able to finally get some mech warrior figures uh, plus my Jenna which I've now taken the spoiler off because it kept trying to snap but then one of the unseen the uh, Warhammer um, really nice mech as I already mentioned you could clean up this edge reasonably well I believe this was printed all at 1.2 layer height uh, it's still in bits. I have had to glue this gun on. I think I haven't glued this weapon. And I printed both guns slightly differently. So this gun I printed upright. And again, due to the temperature issues, I started having a bit of problems with the barrel. So I printed this gun like this with supports, which actually have given me a 
a really rough, hold on, let's turn it so the light's getting on it better. Uh, it's going to be a really rough top edge there. So I think it's going to be best to print it upright like this. And I'm going to have to reprint this arm uh, with the slightly lower temperature settings. Now, the temperature settings actually became much more obvious to me when I tried to print out a flea model uh, that's available in Micro Online. And uh, the problem with the flea model was it started off really, really nicely. Um, if you look here, the, the layer lines at 0.5 are, are pretty hard to spot. But as we got further and further up, can you see it's starting to get rougher and rougher? And I think it's over extruding and sagging. And then I had to actually cancel the print because the gun was just like melting and bending over and was just awful. So um, I've had to tweak the settings a bit, which uh, hopefully the cat will show you just how good the print quality can be. Uh, now, if we focus on the leg, I think the leg for my uh, Warhammer's not bad. So this is 1.2 layer height. So obviously being a mech model, you, you can probably sand this down fairly easily. Uh, you are going to have problems with some of the overhangs, like uh, just above the foot here. But overall, um, you know, in the flesh, some of these layer lines aren't showing up quite as much as on the camera. And then once you actually paint it, um, you know, depends on, on whether you smooth it out or not. It would depend on how bad it looks. Now, obviously, for the mechs, the layer lines, you know, they, they sort of can form part of the look. And I was pretty happy apart from the barrel with the quality I got on, on the gun. But looking at it now, uh, there are a few issues on it. But, um, yeah, much nicer quality than the A-Net. Obviously printed at half the resolution, so you know, or half the layer height, I should say. So that's worked out pretty well. And I'm just really stoked to have MechWarrior Online uh, models as 3D printable models. Um, one of the reasons I actually bought myself a 3D printer was for the possibility of doing just this. So really, really excited and possibly why I'm spending way more time talking about these, uh, uh, you know, so there you go. So I've got my assault, I've got my heavy, I've got my light, so just need the hunchback still. Uh, but I wanted to get the cat printed first, so let's have a look at that now that's all done. Well, we just need to wait for the bed to cool down because this is absolutely stuck fast. The bed is currently 56 degrees, so don't think this cat's moving anywhere. And from this distance, it looks pretty good. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to maintain its focus as I move in. So, yeah, there's a little bit of layer shifting going on uh, just above the nose, possibly. Now, that could be because I've been having problems with the filament, as I discussed. I think the apt problem is just under the mouth. I think that's where the filament did actually jam so um, yeah we'll have to see what it looks like when I can actually get it off the bed but that's looking pretty good quality and it looks like the cat issues have been banished now this is actually the STL off the website and then re g coded via Simplify 3D well it's the following day I've managed to get my cat off it came off really easily uh, if I look at some of the fine detail on this that there is a little bit of layering visible uh, down here uh, I'm not sure if I can tweak this out by fiddling with some settings um, you can see the big problem here just above the collar which is definitely related to um, problems with the filament kind of all binding up and trying to rip her uh, itself off the uh, filament holder so I had to actually manually take it off untwist it whilst it was all printing so that obviously did cause problems and that's obviously then caused issues further up the print one thing that I have noticed on a lot of my prints I'm getting these horrible little bits here which is almost like where the, the hot end is digging in and, and burning a little uh, bit in so that's definitely something I'm going to have to look at Again, could be um, controlled maybe by the retraction settings. Got a little bit of uh, stringing on the back here. Not too bad, it, it, it rubs off. And it's actually a really nice little Lucky Cat model, this, when you get it to print. Um, it has shown up rather a lot of ghost in here for some reason, so not sure what that's all about. Um, definitely some tweaking. As I said in one of my other video snippets, um, probably going to take me a week to start getting this all working for me. But... Yeah, on the whole, that this is actually a pretty good 
uh, model. Now the only step up from this I could see really is um, maybe go into something like a resin printer. Um, so something like the one how D7's got a teeny print bed size, so that might be an option. And that would work because, I mean, you could print this quite happily on that. I think it's something like 120 by 60-ish by, I don't know, 150 high. Um, so, you know, for little small 32 mil figures, uh, a resin printer would be great for bigger items like scenery, uh, cosplay props and stuff. But the build bed of the CR10S is really going to come in useful so at some stage I'm probably going to have to try out doing a vase or something like that. Um, that then leaves me a choice of what to do for my second printer. Now I think a resin printer, it's very messy, it's not something you want to be printing random stuff off like this all the time, you know this would be quite expensive in resin. So um, it would be another CR10S maybe, or alternatively I could look at converting my ANET, uh, which I'm actually really tempted by I have come across the plans for the, I think it's called the AM8 on Thingiverse, where you use some extruded aluminium, so it's end up you know, looking a little bit like the CR10S, but it basically just takes all the components off your A-net and transfer them onto a good frame. And as part of that process, you can do things like uh, soldering the heat bed wires, um, fixing the uh, fan blower, um, fit in a couple of MOSFETs to help with uh, heating up the hot end and the hot bed. Uh, so that's something I'm really keen to look into. Uh, I think I found all the frame material I can pick up for about, I think it was 50 to 70 euro sort of price range. The big problem is going to be all the nuts and bolts and washers and stuff like that um, that you need to actually assemble the kit and then the hundred odd hours of 3D parts you need to print off. Uh, now, I would probably print most of them off in PLA. There are a couple of options to print in, like, uh, PETG. Um, that's something I might have to look into. I haven't really done any PETG. Um, so that that's maybe the fate for my ANET. Um, I, I was thinking of maybe selling it, but I, th I think having a second printer would be useful. The big problem I've got is where to put it, um, should I do that. Um, so a little resin printer for fine detail part, maybe sometime in my future, uh, probably be next year at the rate things are going. Uh, maybe another CR10S if I start building lots of big printable parts. But, you know, a CR10S and an ANET combined gives me, you know, a small printer for things like this. You know, ANET would be great for that once it's upgraded. Uh, the CR10S, uh, very impressed, um, you know, for hardly any tweaking. This is pretty good. Now this is a modified profile off Facebook. Um, um, I forget the name of it now, but it's the, the CR10S Facebook um, group. They have a couple of profiles and, and this one, I think it was a Chris. Um, so I took this and slightly tweaked it. I, I lowered the temperature, for example, on my thing, although this one I think was printed at 200 degrees and 1.2 layer height. Anyway, I think that will do for now. Um, so more news when I've got some major updates. In the meantime, I've got to go check on my hunchback that you can hear printing in the background. Uh, I'm actually being very cheeky in doing a six, seven hour print and printing the whole mech in one go rather than individual parts. I want to see how that works out. And um, yeah, um, as I said in my unboxing and review, very impressed by this. Just make sure you watch that Tiny Machines video that I've linked on my original video. That will give you a really good idea how to assemble it. And I think some people are claiming, you know, within 20 minutes you can actually get the printer up and running. And, and I agree with that. The biggest problem is going to be dialing in uh, the bed level and tweaking with your settings in your slicer of choice. But once you've done that, um, yeah, the actual build time, if I was to get a second one, I reckon 20 minutes I, I would easily be done. So there you go, that's it, and I hope my lucky cat sends you all good vibes. So till the next video, take care.